Welcome back to this week's edition of Freedom and Prosperity Radio, the weekly radio news magazine we put together here and archive for you on our YouTube channel. Go to youtube.com and search Freedom and Prosperity Radio. You've heard a lot about them, and the premise is uh, basically the government does get to know. They've had unending streams of people coming out and saying, oh, no, 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 HIPAA doesn't protect you uh, from being asked by your employer or anyone else if you've been, uh, had, well, had any interactions with your doctor, or even a vaccine. Uh, to join us now to talk about this a little bit, President of the American Constitutional Rights Union, Lori Roman. Lori, welcome back to the program. How are you doing? Thank you. Fantastic, except for the uh, tyranny and oppression we see all around us. You know, it's it's a sad state of affairs when we need to have an organization like yours because you'd think that we would all come out of uh, our elementary education understanding what our rights and responsibilities are in this country, uh, but apparently it's just about critical race theory now, as if they were doing such a bang-up job before that teaching our kids, oh, I don't know, civics. I'm old enough to remember all of those good things like civics and the Pledge of Allegiance and learning about the Constitution, but... Sadly, I think those days are over in most schools. Yeah, it is, is sadly that. And and it creates a world where we just sort of nod when the TV talking head says, well, you'll need a vaccine passport to get on an airplane or to go into your favorite restaurant. And we go, well, I guess if they say I need that. Um, you, you know, talk about, first and foremost, what they're building this uh, premise on uh, with, with even leaving out the fact that they're not technically vaccines in the classical sense. Uh, they're sort of uh, symptom reducers uh, more than anything else. Uh, but beyond all that, we, you know, the, the premise that they're building these vaccine passports on uh, is what, Laurie? Well, the vaccine passports, I, I would hope we could all agree on whether we like vac the vaccine or you don't like the vaccination. Um which is kind of beside the point. The point yeah. is that the passports or the apps on the phone or carrying around proof that you've been vaccinated or even coercion to be vaccinated by employers or um, by businesses that have um, public, um, public use, really. Mm -hmm. those, uh, those passports that they're talking about, we should all be able to agree on, I think. So even if you've been vaccinated... Um, you shouldn't like the idea that someone's going to force you to put an app on your phone and prove that you are vaccinated. So giving your private medical information to a third party, uh, a company, and we know what data, data mining happens now. It mm -hmm. happens on everything. You know, if you, if you go to the grocery checkout and you use a discount card, you know they're data mining you. They're finding out everything about you. Mm -hmm. So these passports, passports are very insidious and they resemble two things that should really get our attention. One, they resemble the old Soviet internal passport system that was used to control the, the rural folks, the peasants. The, the Soviets had a pretty good handle on controlling the city folks, but they needed a way to control those pesky pen, peasants that um, liked freedom out in the countryside, so mm -hmm. they developed an internal passport system. It also appears that it could be the very beginning of what we already see happening in China, which is the Chinese social credit system, where there's already kind of a passport system for Chinese residents. Mm -hmm. And they don't just load medical information. They load uh, how well you are behaved, according to the Communist Party, on things like social media. Um, have, are you being a good little communist member? And so um, once you load that app, there is no end to what they can ask you to put on that app. And it is not private. It's Usually, uh, you know, third party, it's companies doing these things at the behest of governments. And that is the uh, quick path to fascism that we haven't really experienced in this country. And when people say, oh, this is conspiracy theory stuff, I say it's already happening. Um, American Constitutional Rights Union has been working on this since last fall. And um, we've been working on the COVID tyrant situation since March of 2020. But we started getting phone calls from um, students at colleges who already were being asked to download apps, take mandatory COVID tests, load their results on an app in order to, say, get into the dining hall to eat the food that they had already paid for on their meal plan. You know, that's so this the, isn't uh, a conspiracy. This is real life. It's happening right now. 
And this is the young lady I think you wrote about from Rutgers University, Lori? Yes, and that's just the latest. The, the first one that we um, that we helped was the University of Nebraska-Lincoln folks who were getting um, mandatory COVID testing, and now it's moved into mandatory COVID vaccinations. And so, yes, we helped uh, some Rutgers students who, with some some press and giving them some publicity around a protest that they were mm-hmm. um, conducting, trying to push back on mandatory vaccinations. My phone rings every single day with a parent or a student who wants to fight back against mandatory vaccinations. Um, We're not in the business of telling people whether they should get a vaccination or not. We're just in the business of freedom at the Mm. American Constitutional Rights Union. Certainly, yeah. And uh, medical choice and privacy is a very basic, very basic part of freedom. I don't, it seems like we shouldn't have to argue about these things, but apparently we do. And, um, Too many people are just being sheep on this. Um, Imagine a world where you have to put your private medical information on an app on your phone and swipe it to get into stores and and Mm. events and concerts. And and, uh, I can't even believe that we have to have a conversation with American citizens that this is a bad idea. Is it unfair for me to point out that, you know, President Biden's political affiliation, you know, it will fall over itself if you even mention the name Roe or Wade uh, and you're not a member of their political party because they'll immediately think you're going to try to overthrow uh, this landmark decision, a decision that was based on the fact that the government had no right to know your medical, you know, what what you were doing with your doctor. If I'm if I grasp the nuance of how the case was argued legally, the case was the Texas government couldn't know what Ms. Rose's medical procedures were in any way, so they couldn't possibly ban them. Well, the left can't have it both ways on this. Um, their hypocrisy is very is very prominent on this one issue. Uh, you will have students, especially in professors on college campuses who will say, my body, my choice, all day long until it comes to vaccinations or mandatory testing, Mm -hmm. uh, medical testing. So um, it's it's just amazing the hypocrisy on this. They don't believe in medical freedom, medical privacy, or medical choice unless it's about abortion. That's the only thing uh, that matters to them. And a lot of the people who are calling us at American Constitutional Rights Union are young women, Mm -hmm. young women who've decided they've done their research, they're smart, they've done their research, and they made a choice. And the choice they made was that they didn't want a vaccination. And um, these very liberal colleges are now telling them they're not welcome on campus. Um, We had um, someone leak to us last, just a few days ago, from Kettering University, in Flint, Michigan, which is my old hometown, Kettering University that sent um, a letter to their um, employees telling them that if they got vaccinated, they could have a gold star for their, um, their badge that they wear around their neck all day, every day. Wow. So if you're not vaccinated, you don't get the gold star, and everyone knows your private medical information. Yeah. And the coercion factor of this is major. So the person who linked this to us said, I'm afraid I'm going to lose my job if I don't get this vaccination. Mm -hmm. And because of some health issues that I have, I don't feel it's safe for me. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and that's the thing. It's it's almost a reverse scarlet letter. You get marked for not doing something. It's really insidious when you think about it. How many people are very happily saying, oh, I got my gold star, I'm vaccinated. And then those people over there, I guess they're the unclean people. They Mm. will be treated differently. Those people have to wear masks. Those people have to social distance. Those people will be treated differently. And that's going to happen all through society. We will have, um, if we let this advance, we will have a a two-tiered system for the uh, folks who are deemed clean by the government or by the private sector and those who are not. In New York State, they're rolling this out. The state yep. is rolling it out. They actually are implementing in a, in test phases, in smaller batches, COVID passports for their citizens, um, which may be a reason why I keep seeing New York license plates <laughs> near my home in Florida. <laughs> it used to be when I was growing up, those were just the snowbirds. 
Lori Roman is on with us. Uh, she is president of the American Constitutional Rights uh, Union. Uh, we've done some great pieces. Go to their website, theacru.org. Uh, T-H-E-A-C-R-U dot O-R-G and just follow, help uh, help out in every way, shape, or form. Upload your stories as well. Uh, they all have to be there. What about uh, the the two arguments that I hear is, number one, uh, now people are saying, oh, well, you don't, you don't have HIPAA protections uh, from a business that can ask you that. That's only uh, your medical professionals can't be compelled to share your me- your medical information. Uh, is this a mischaracterization of the privacy issues that uh, citizens would be looking at, Lori? My understanding is that HIPAA doesn't really protect people um, if they voluntarily give that information over to an app or they give it to someone in the private sector. Then um, HIPAA really is intended for medical professionals um, mm-hmm. to not share information. What we've seen on the college campuses is the colleges are getting around it by asking the students to sign a waiver, and they're basically just signing their rights away. Um, mm-hmm. They should never sign those waivers. Um, the waiver basically says, yes, I'm going to give you all my information. I have no, right, I have no mm-hmm. rights to privacy. But um, So there are a lot of, um, I think, misconceptions about the HIPAA privacy. We hear that a lot. It doesn't really protect you. Um, from a lot of this, and what we have to do is encourage the states to do um, things to protect their citizens. So you have Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who started with an executive order banning COVID passports, and now it's been passed in legislation. Mm-hmm. You have South Dakota Governor uh, Dakota Governor Kristi Noem um, has also uh, done an executive order. Uh, it, it's been great to see Iowa step up and Georgia uh, just recently. All of these have their own nuances, but Governor Reynolds in uh, Iowa just signed a bill banning vaccine passports. Um, When people think they can't do anything, let me just say what you can do is pressure at the state level and ask your state legislators to protect your medical choice and privacy. It's not Mm anti-vaccine. You may choose to take the vaccine, but still not want anyone to know your private medical information. Sure. Um, But push your state legislators to do it is is the way that you would go about it if you wanted to have some influence over this. Um, So at American Constitutional Rights Union Action Fund, which is our C4 side, we do exactly that. Uh, we are pushing state legislators to do the right thing. I testified in front of the Michigan legislature on some bills a few weeks ago. Um, that's where the protection is going to come. And don't settle for an executive order. Those mm-hmm. are nice. You want them backed up um, by legislation right. to completely protect you. And then I've never been one for boycotts, but I'm telling you, any private sector company that tries to get me to um, share my private medical information in order to use their goods or services will not get my business. And I would say the power will come in pushing against the private sector and making them pay a price mm-hmm. for being so intrusive and anti-freedom. Lori, let me ask you this, and this is something I believe that earnest legislators are trying to grapple with, which is the question a lot of business owners have is protecting them against the lawsuit that says, oh, I got COVID-19 because the waiter uh, wasn't vaccinated, uh, or I guess previously it wasn't wearing a mask or it wasn't wearing gloves, but uh, that COVID-19, to put it in a colloquialism, is going to be the new I slipped on your sidewalk um, you know, talk about the need. Is there really a need for that, or is that just a politician kind of making up stories to make, to justify their work? Well, I have no doubt that the leftist trial attorneys will do everything they can in that regard. But wait till they see the other side of the lawsuits. Wait until they see the lawsuits um, that come from employers who coerced their employees into getting the vaccination, and then they had side effects. So, um, by the way. If anyone is listening who has an employer that has mandated a vaccination or coerced them in some way to get Mm -hmm. a vaccination or has exposed their private medical choices by way of a gold star or a special badge or anything else, they should reach out to American Constitutional Rights Union at theacru.org. 
uh, I will say that it will come where someone will be coerced or mandated to get a vaccination who will have side effects, Mm -hmm. and that will be a big lawsuit. One can only pray that they're not grave uh, because I've seen some frightening stories about the side effects, uh, especially for folks who, you know, had already contracted COVID-19 uh, and then went and got the vaccine because we were told, you know, that, oh, this is what everyone's doing. The media is doing an artful job, not only of, of pitching the vaccines, but also of thoroughly frightening the bejibbers out of the American uh, population uh, by, you know, playing fast and loose with statistics. I mean, there's a real there's a real crisis uh, in our media where, you know, there's there's going to be a, a almost a boy who cries wolf. Uh, blowback on on the media because I think people are going to stop believing anything they say. Well, remember the federal government gave immunity to the to big pharma as mm-hmm. it came to um, side effects from these vaccinations, but they did not give immunity to the private companies or the uh, other institutions that may try to force the vaccine on their employees or their customers. Um, those people are not protected, and they are leaving themselves vulnerable to not only boycotts, but also lawsuits. Now, there would be an edition of Freedom and Prosperity Radio. Get Bobby Kennedy on Freedom and Prosperity Radio and watch people say, who, what? There's got to be a different Bobby Kennedy, but uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. has been doing a lot of work on that very legality uh, where uh, the pharmaceutical, comp- pharmaceutical companies have not uh, kept up their end of the bargain regarding that immunity uh, from uh, lawsuit uh, there, Lori. Uh, so at the end of the day, uh, just a quick you know, thumbnail sketch of toolkits. Let's say I'm, you know, a, a college student at uh, UVA or Virginia Tech, and they say, yeah, you can't come back unless uh, you pay, and by the way, or you get a vaccine, and by the way, if you do, you may uh, forfeit your tuition uh, money uh, or there'll be fines to be uh, levied. What what are the, what things should they be saying at the onset to make sure that they can come back later and perhaps even file a suit? There is strength in numbers, so the first thing they should do is um, they can call us at American Constitutional Rights Union, and we will link them to other uh, campus groups so that they have other students around them that are willing to fight back with them, Mm -hmm. uh, such as Campus Reform, which is uh, a project of the Leadership Institute, or Young Americans for Liberty, um, two groups that uh, we've worked with to help organize students. So first they need strength in numbers. They need to enlist their parents, and they need to start working on Board of Regents, who are often... Um, elected in their state, so Mm -hmm. they need a public campaign pressure against the Board of Regents. Um, They also need to they also need to um, push back on their state legislators to offer them protection, as Florida has done. In Florida, you're not uh, university, state universities are not allowed to do that. Um, But there is strength in numbers. They need to be noisy. But the next thing that really gets those universities thinking about things in addition to the Board of Regents who are usually elected, is start contacting donors and alumni. Parents, donors, and alumni have a lot more money than those students, Mm -hmm. and their their influence will be really important, but you have to be noisy, you have to protest. And some brave people are going to have to boycott these universities. Um, We have seen that some of the parents who've already written that tuition payment are hesitant to let their kids be these protesters. Right. And we've seen some parents actually pushing their kids to get vaccinations the kids don't want. And I'm getting those phone calls. Kids say, I, I took the vaccine, I didn't want to, um, because about- my parents pressured me because we already paid the tuition. It's a problem. Parents need to stand by their kids. If they want medical choice and privacy, let them fight for it. What, what about things like FAFSA? Uh, and the federal student loan, you know, programs that are out there now, can the federal government coerce students by saying, "Hey, uh, by the way, you know that FOSFA you uh, uh, were approved for that'll go away if you don't get a COVID vaccine"? Well, right now the law that the colleges are operating under is um, the funding they got through um, the federal funding that they got tells them basically they have to click check a box that says that they did everything they could to minimize COVID's effects on the students or some such language. Mm -hmm. Um, It doesn't tell them exactly that they have to do COVID passports or mandatory vaccinations or even mandatory testing. The, The funding that they're getting to fight COVID does not specify that. So any university that's doing this, 
is going way above and beyond what the federal government has um, put in their funding language. Um, they don't have to do it. If they blame it on the feds, I'd say that they're being disingenuous. That, and that would be shocking to me, Lori. Well, thank you for keeping up this fight. Uh, it's amazing that these are the same folks who insist that asking for a driver's license to vote is the, akin to the Gestapo saying, where are your papers? But they're fine with this stuff. Uh, and we appreciate what you're doing there at the American Constitutional Rights Union, theacru.org. Thank you so much, Lori, for joining us this week on Freedom and Prosperity Radio. Thanks so much. You all do great work. Well, thank you. It's uh, it's teamwork makes the dream work. Uh, as she said, reach out to them, theacru.org. For all of us here at the Virginia Institute for Public Policy, virginiainstitute.org is our website. Find out more about the Tuesday morning group coalition meetings. Uh, these are monthly get-togethers uh, where we get together with thought leaders and, and those who are pushing forward these agendas. You might even hear from somebody like Lori at one of these uh, get-togethers. Uh, find out more about that, as well as uh, download podcasts of previous episodes from our YouTube channel. And until next week, my name is Joe Thomas. So long, and thanks for all the fish.